Hope you're doing good. Mike, are back with another video. Back here to talk about the iOS 18 Beta 3 re release and the follow up to iOS 18 Beta 3 as a whole since this dropped last week. And what a time it has been for us iPhone users to be able to experience some customization and to be able to experience a new world that Apple is presenting to us with Apple intelligence, which we have not been able to experience yet. But the level of customization features and many wishless items that we finally can experience here with iOS on our iPhones. Now with the re-release, we're gonna jump into settings just so you guys can see. They do these re-releases with the developer betas to align them with the public betas because the public betas will be dropping very soon, either today, tomorrow, or Wednesday. And so the build numbers are gonna be very similar. So we go to about and settings, and then we go to iOS version here. As you guys can see, it's an I. So we backtrack a couple letters here, but it's now in more in line with the release date of the actual iOS 18 official stable build, which will be sometime in September, October. So that's what we see there. If I actually go to photos and I show you guys the most recent pic here, you guys will see that no one said to do any of this. The update only came in around 360 megabytes, so very small. Some minor bug fixes and improvements. I think some smoothness and fluidity problems have been resolved to actually improve the use of this beta, in my opinion. And we're going to definitely experience that over the course of this week and next week. Just to let you guys know up front in the video, we probably won't see beta 4 until around the 20. 8th 29th like towards the end of july because this is now the 17th and right now they've been doing every other week or bi-weekly updates for the developer beta with the public build on the horizon though it should switch to weekly for public betas so we will see from that perspective but what are some of the things that have changed since updating to the re-release of ios 18 beta 3 well if we jump in here to messages i jump in here to the wife she was knocked out. I had to send it to her. If I hit this button down here, you guys will see that the icons down here at the bottom for Memoji stickers and stickers nonetheless, they're no longer there. And if we want, we can confirm, but there is nothing here. So they've reverted the keyboard back to normal. And this even also includes the sizing of the, of the emojis. They were bigger and more spaced out. Now they're back to being a little smaller and more compact. So I don't know if this was an, if that was an accident and it actually wasn't ready for those type of updates for iOS 18 yet if they were posing issues, but it did revert back to normal on the keyboard for now, maybe in the next update or by the time the official stable release is available, maybe we'll have the more spaced out emojis, larger emojis, sticker emojis, Memoji stickers, so on and so forth. I hope that they bring at least the ladder back with the Memoji stickers and the stickers in line because I really like that feature and hopefully I'll be able to experiment with that going forward. So please Apple bring that back. Another issue that hopefully has been resolved is RCS. So with my phone here, you guys can see it says RCS with my Samsung Galaxy S24, if you will. And one of the things that I'm hoping that they bring back uh, or that they have fixed with this update is being able to send a message and for it to send as an RCS message as opposed to an iMessage. I think with this transition with RCS, it during the beta has kind of confused the message for an iMessage, which will cause a message to fail and then revert to a SMS text message as opposed to an RCS message. And so hopefully this is something that they also resolved with this small re-release of iOS 18 beta 3. Another issue that they fix is with customization. And it's actually, you could almost argue a few things, but hidden and customize, the tint option has now been fixed. So if I hit tint here, it's gonna change everything to a tint. It really doesn't look bad. And if I wanted to maybe bring it a little more in line with what I have going on on my wallpaper already, 
give a little Naruto flair there. This has been resolved to look more clean, more sleek, and less jittery, much more smooth in terms of the transition of the colored icons. So this is something that I definitely like from that perspective. I'm hoping that they also fixed, which we'll kind of test here live, is with the JW Library app. That's one of the apps that I was having issues with outside of the tint. So if I kind of switch back to dark real quick, if I switch to large, you see how a few apps resort or, or revert back to normal. That is an issue that, as we see, has not been fixed yet. But if I go back to small, they also then return back to regular dark mode. If I want to bring my tent back, of course I can. And shout out to Naruto and Minato as my wallpaper of choice right now. If I go ahead and just show you guys that, look at that. Uh, clean. So... I thought I have a little a little darker orange for Naruto, his son, you know what I'm saying? But again, that's anime. So those are some of the things that they've also fixed when it comes to iOS 18 Beta 3 re-release. And another issue that they fixed was the App Store. So upon going into the App Store, it would crash upon trying to... Uh, not the Apple Store, not the App Store. So right here at the bottom, as you guys can see right there, if I hit the Apple Store, this would crash when you would come into the app and now as you guys can see it works flawlessly works just fine you come in here and true you know play around buy purchase apple products with ease i'm i'm sure they're glad that they fixed that because people probably prefer to use the app over having to go into the store online going to the store physically having that app available ready to use is everybody's go-to choice most likely now a few things that i caught over the course of the week since running iOS Beta 3 in general, has been the fact that Voice Memos has added the ability to do stereo recording. So if we come back out, come scroll all the way down to Apps, and then we scroll down here to V, we're going to see Voice Memos. And upon there, clicking it, turn it on right there, stereo recording. So whenever you want to record, voice memos you can record them in stereo recording which will improve the quality of the recording and you can also even change the quality if you guys didn't know that between lossless and compressed and of course i'm doing lossless control center has arrow toggles for quick settings something that i also didn't highlight in my first video and so what i mean by that is if you swipe down and then these little arrows right there so these ones right here allow you to make adjustments on the fly You can press and hold or actually click on it and now it kind of gives you an option to choose different settings right there on the fly without having to you know do multiple steps in order to access that i think that's very great for apple to add these little small nuanced changes for us to be experienced with our iphones with ios 18. Podcast also has a new splash screen and has precise sharing. So I took a screenshot of this. So hopefully you guys will be able to see this here. This is podcast. And as it says, precise sharing, share a link to a specific time from the player for transcript or transcript. Faster search means more real time results when searching for whatever it is that you're searching for. So instant search results and then more playback control reorder your queue and navigate by chapters when available and that i did show you guys which is when you're in a podcast so let's let's just jump right in here if you're in here you're able to actually scrub and actually select chapters instead of having to be in the queue and then selecting your chapters from above now i probably still prefer this method over scrubbing through here because then i have to kind of turn around and use my fast forward and rewind buttons to actually find the, the precise moment of when that chapter begins so I don't miss any information. But that is nice. What's also nice is, let's say I, I start this here and shout out to, who is this, 9 to 5 Mac. I hit pause, but I actually want to share this moment. If I click out of here, I should be able to hit this share episode. Once I hit share episode, you'll be able to see, see right here at the top, it says from start. And as opposed to from start, I can do from the four second mark, which is where I'm currently at. What a beautiful option that Apple has added for podcasts. Because sometimes you just want to share something with somebody 
about this specific moment that we're experiencing or hearing about within a podcast episode. And that's what we want to share. We don't even want to have to necessarily share the whole entire episode with them. It's just from this minute second marker and then they can listen to as much as they need to to get the point that we may have been trying to share with them i definitely definitely like that new ability here in apple podcast so again great thank you apple for adding that and the last thing that i was able to spot is in settings and if we scroll down to screen time we will see that this is now fixed and is much more accurate to screen time. So now all these things work in here as a result of iOS 18 beta 3. And now with the re-release, I'm sure this could have addressed some more of these issues, bugs, glitches that may have been resolved. So that way we can have more of a enjoyable experiment, experience experimenting and testing out these new features. And so in terms of performance wise over the course of the week, I think it's been more or less stable again outside of certain app icons reverting, reverting back to normal, not even having a dark mode icon when it's in large icon mode. Uh, those issues aside, it's been fine. Battery life has been fairly fine as well. You know, it's been very stable for iOS 18 beta three. My phone, as you guys can see, is still on 100% because I had just taken off the charger before doing this video. We have a very light, a bright light shining straight down on the phone, causing the display to emit at a higher nit peak brightness. We're about 12 minutes into this video, and I am still at 100%. So it shows you that battery life has been pretty good, and the fact that I also just downloaded new software and battery life still hasn't quite dipped yet. Still at 100% is amazing. One of the things I don't show you guys quite often because I don't think about it is my battery health. If we jump into battery health, I'm still at 100% with 241 charge cycles. Of course, manufactured and first used was September 2023. So I've had this phone brand new for all this time. I'm still at 100% because I take advantage of optimized charging, battery charging. Outside of wired CarPlay, which is the only other time it's really going to get any form of charging, I will wirelessly charge it with my CryoBoost ESR charging station in order to maintain charge. Otherwise, I rarely actually jack in to charge. So a lot of wireless charging. That CryoBoost keeps the battery cool while charging, which is probably also preserving my battery life on this. And I'm hoping to be able to keep this and add to this with the iPhone 16 Pro Max. So that way I can have a beta device while having a clean daily driver and I need my battery life to stay as sufficient and efficient as possible for my use. So I can definitely say battery life has been pretty good with iOS 18 beta 3. Performance has been pretty good and I can't wait to try out the public beta with this iPhone starting, if not this week, next week. You can jump from the, if we come into settings here, and come into software update you can jump from the ios developer beta to the public beta and it is now officially available so if i do switch over let's see what happens it's oh so it won't actually show it because we are rocking the same exact build number but next week or the week after when they drop public beta 2 i will be able to then switch on over to the public beta so i'm actually going to leave it on public beta for now had i waited you know, an hour or two before actually updating to the re-release, I could have actually switched on over to the public beta. So it's now good to see that the public beta is available and you will see my thoughts on the public beta next week because I only have one iPhone and I can't actually switch over right now due to the build number. So keep that in mind when you guys are trying to switch between the developer beta and the public beta. If you only have one Apple device, don't update to the re-release if you want to jump into the brand new public beta. So that is advice for you guys you get right here on this channel. Let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think about the iPhone, iOS 18, your favorite features. Are you going to try out the public beta now that it is officially available? The comment section is open for discussion. Again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure to ignite the like button, subscribe, channel the notification bell, so all free that's my video so you and I can sit back, check, see who's cracking. And don't forget to hit that super thanks button down there by the like and dislike button, cash out on PayPal, and check the channel out for all the videos available to you. That's a way to keep tech fresh and alive on this channel. Friend Mike is signing out until the next video. Wait for it.